Sony just dropped a $700 PlayStation. $700 for a console? And the wild part? If you put it next to the regular PS5, they look exactly the same. No shiny pro badge, no glowing neon strips, no sleek redesign to make it feel futuristic, just two big black and white boxes that could pass as twins. One costs 500, the other costs 700. And unless you're some kind of silicon psychic, you'd never know which is which. Now that makes you wonder, why would anyone pay $200 more for something that looks identical? Well, because all the magic is happening under the hood. Sony didn't bother with flashy cosmetics. They poured every dollar into what you can't see. It's like buying a car that looks like a Toyota Corolla on the outside, but under the hood, it's secretly packing a Formula One engine. That's the PS5 Pro. On the outside, same spaceship-looking console. On the inside, it's a whole different beast. And the heart of that beast? The GPU. That's the chip that controls everything you actually see on screen. The graphics, the lighting, the shadows, the reflections, the part that makes your jaw drop when you walk through a neon-lit street in Cyberpunk or swing past skyscrapers in Spider-Man. Sony didn't just give this thing a mild upgrade. No, they went full mad scientist. They stitched together pieces from three different AMD GPU families, RDNA2, RDNA3, and even some unreleased future tech. It's like they raided AMD's lab in the middle of the night and said, we'll take a little of this, a little of that, oh, and whatever experimental thing you're not supposed to release until 2026. Mark Cerny, PlayStation's hardware wizard, calls it RDNA 2.X, which honestly sounds like a placeholder name, like they couldn't decide if it was RDNA 2.5 or 3. But here's the bottom line. This hybrid design is a monster. The original PS5 shipped with 36 compute units. The Pro, 60. That's a 67% jump. Imagine if your boss gave you 67% more co-workers overnight. Suddenly, projects that used to take weeks are getting done in days. That's what's happening inside the Pro. And all that extra muscle translates into raw power. 16.7 teraflops compared to the PS5's 10.28. If teraflops sound like a made-up gamer currency, think of them like horsepower, the Pro basically strapped a turbocharger onto the PS5's engine. And here's the kicker. Sony managed this without moving to a smaller manufacturing process. They're still on the same 6 nanometer tech as the PS5 Slim. So instead of shrinking the kitchen, they train the chef to cook in three different cuisines at once. That's bold and risky. The real flex, though, is ray tracing. On the regular PS5, ray tracing is like extra seasoning. Nice when it works, but it slows everything down. On the Pro, Sony says ray tracing runs two to three times faster. Suddenly, puddles in games don't just look wet. They actually reflect neon signs and headlights. Shadows bend realistically instead of looking like fuzzy blobs. Glass looks like glass, not plastic wrap. And here's the crazy part. These ray tracing features don't even exist in PC GPUs yet. Let that sink in. If you built a $2,000 gaming rig today, it still wouldn't have some of the ray tracing tricks Sony baked into the Pro. That's wild. Usually consoles are the ones playing catch up, but this time, Sony's leapfrogging ahead. Of course, Stuffing future tech into today's silicon isn't simple. Every Pro GPU has to be tested way more brutally than regular PS5 chips. It's not just, does this thing run? It's, can it handle workloads from the future without melting down? If a chip can't cut it, it gets thrown into the reject bin. That means higher rejection rates, lower yields, and much higher costs per chip. Sony's basically running a Silicon Hunger Games, and only the strongest survive. And those survivors? They're expensive. Now here's what makes this so fascinating. Sony didn't need to do this. They could have slapped a slightly larger GPU in there, called it a pro, and gamers still would have lined up, but they didn't. They gambled. They stitched together a Franken GPU nobody else has integrated unreleased tech, and made sure it still runs every single PS5 game you already own. That's nuts. 
because normally, backward compatibility is the first thing that breaks when you mix architectures. Sony somehow pulled it off. This GPU story alone explains a big chunk of why the PS5 Pro costs so much. We're not talking about a lazy refresh. We're talking about a console that's packing experimental features no PC has, with rejection rates high enough to make accountants cry. And yet, Sony still ships it at a mass market level. That's ambition. That's them saying, we're not just keeping up with PCs, in some ways we're ahead of them. But the GPU is only part of the story, because the next upgrade, if we, uh, the memory, or we, is where things get sneaky. The Pro still has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, just like the regular PS5, but here's the twist, they cranked up the bandwidth by 28%, pushing it to 576 gigabytes per second. If that sounds meaningless, think of it like this. The regular PS5's memory is a six-lane highway during rush hour. The Pro just expanded it to eight lanes and gave everyone Ferraris. Traffic? Gone. Data just flies. And then Sony added an extra two gigs of DDR5 memory just for the operating system. Why does that matter? On the regular PS5, the OS and games have to share memory like annoying roommates fighting over fridge space. On the Pro, the OS gets its own little fridge, which means your games get the entire 16 gigs of high-speed GDDR6 to themselves. For developers, that's like suddenly having a private studio instead of a shared office. More headroom, fewer bottlenecks, smoother performance. Of course, premium memory isn't cheap. These chips cost about 60% more than standard ones, and every single module goes through brutal stress testing before it's allowed into a console. We're talking Navy SEAL training for silicon. If a chip fails under pressure, it doesn't make it into your Pro. That's another reason why the console costs more. You're not just paying for memory, you're paying for memory that survived boot camp. So to recap the first act of our story, Sony built a Franken GPU from three generations of AMD tech, doubled or tripled ray tracing speeds, added features that don't even exist in PC hardware, overclocked the memory, and gave the OS its own dedicated space. And all of this had to be validated, tested, and produced at scale with rejection rates through the roof. That's where your extra $200 is going. And we're just getting started because Sony's real secret weapon isn't the GPU or the memory. It's something else entirely. So if the GPU is the heart of the PS5 Pro and the memory is the bloodstream, then Sony's secret weapon is like... The brain. It's called PSSR, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution. Sounds fancy, right? But what it really means is this console can cheat in a good way. See, rendering games at native 4K with all the bells and whistles is insanely demanding. It's like asking your brain to write an exam, run a marathon, and play chess all at once. Something's gonna give. On PC, NVIDIA's solution is DLSS, AI upscaling that takes a lower resolution image and blows it up so it looks like 4K, but runs much smoother. Sony looked at that and said, Cool idea, but what if we do it our way? Instead of slapping extra AI cores on the chip, they made the GPU itself handle the job. That's like telling your chef, hey, you're also going to DJ the party tonight. Crazy, but somehow it works. PSSR can handle 300 trillion operations per second for 8-bit machine learning. That's enough horsepower to take a 1440p frame, upscale it beautifully to 4K, and still lock the frame rate at 60. And Sony spent four years cooking this up. Four years! That's like half a console generation, and the reason is obvious. You can't just throw AI into a console and hope it works. Latency has to be razor thin. If pressing jump feels delayed because the AI is still touching up your frame, gamers will riot. Sony had to fine-tune this thing to deliver sharp images and zero noticeable lag. And the best part? Developers don't have to bend over backwards to use it. It's baked into the console, which means future games can tap into PSSR without building an entire separate pipeline. For you, it just means sharper graphics and smoother gameplay without even noticing the trickery. Now, all of this, the Franken GPU, the overclocked memory, the AI upscaling brain, comes at a cost. Literally, let's break it down. 
the GPU alone, around $180 to manufacture. That's 50% more than the regular PS5's chip. The high-speed memory? $65 instead of $45. Add the extra DDR5 modules, the 2TB SSD, and the fact that Sony still uses liquid metal cooling, but with a more refined process because the Pro runs hotter, and you're looking at $420 in raw parts for every single unit. Compare that to $280 for the standard PS5. And that's before you factor in the half a billion dollars Sony invested into R&D over three years. Half a billion just to invent this hybrid GPU, build PSSR from scratch, and make sure it doesn't melt in your living room. Cooling deserves its own shout out here, because look, the PS5 Pro runs hotter than the regular PS5. More compute units, faster memory, AI workloads, that's a lot of heat. Sony stuck with liquid metal, but here's the thing. Applying liquid metal to a chip isn't like buttering toast. Do it wrong and you fry the whole system. So they refined the process, tightened quality control, and made sure every single unit could handle the extra heat. That's why you don't see pro meltdown headlines yet. All that precision? Yeah, it costs money too. Now let's step back and put this into perspective. $700 sounds steep, but what if you tried to build a PC with equivalent performance? Spoiler, you're not getting away with less than $1,200. Between the GPU, the SSD, the premium memory, and the cooling solution, you'd be bleeding cash. And then you'd still have to deal with drivers, Windows updates, random crashes, and the joy of troubleshooting why your brand new game refuses to launch. With the Pro, you just plug it into your TV, hit the power button, and you're in. This is where Sony is flexing. They're saying, look, we can deliver high-end PC gaming in a box for half the price. And whether you buy it or not, that's impressive. But the real question isn't can it, it's should you? For most people, the regular PS5 is still more than enough. It runs every game, delivers great visuals, and costs less. If you're a casual gamer, if you play FIFA, Fortnite, Call of Duty, you don't need the Pro. But if you're the type who notices when shadows look fake, or reflections don't line up, or frame rates dip below 60, then yeah, the Pro is for you. It's not just about playing games, it's about appreciating the tech flex behind them. Think of it this way, the PS5 is like a great mid-range car. Smooth, reliable, gets you where you need to go. The Pro is the tuned up version with racing parts under the hood, you don't need it, but man, when you drive it, you feel the difference. And let's not forget storage. Sony ships the Pro with a 2 terabyte SSD, because let's face it, modern games are storage hogs. One Call of Duty install and half your drive is gone. With 2 terabytes, you can finally have more than 3 games installed without playing Which Child Do I Delete Today? That's another quality of life upgrade that adds to the cost, but also to the experience. Now, let's talk rejection rates again with Ximui. Because this is something people don't always think about. Not every chip Sony makes actually survives the testing gauntlet. The Pro chips are held to stricter standards because they have to handle legacy PS5 games and next-gen ray tracing features. If a chip can't pull double duty, it gets tossed. That means Sony wastes more silicon which means each working chip costs more. You're basically paying for the survival of the fittest, and this is why the Pro is fascinating. It's not just a console, it's a proof of concept. It's Sony saying, we can still innovate, we can still push boundaries, we can still bring future tech into a mass market product. Because let's be honest, consoles have been on the defensive for years. PCS are stronger, phones are catching up. Everyone's been saying, well, why bother with consoles? And then Sony drops this thing and says, because we can still do things even PCs can't. And in some ways, they're right. The Pro's ray tracing tech isn't in any PC card right now. PSSR is custom built for gaming in a way that DLSS isn't always optimized for. And all of this is packed into a $700 box, so is it worth it? That's up to you. If you're happy with the regular PS5, stick with it. It's still a beast, but if you want to see games at their absolute best, 
sharper, smoother, more realistic, then the Pro is worth considering. It's not a console for everyone, it's a console for enthusiasts, for the people who care about the little details, for the ones who paused Spider-Man 2 just to admire the reflections in a window, and honestly, that's fine, not every console has to be for everyone. The PS5 Pro is like a luxury car. You don't need it, but if you can afford it and you care about performance, it's going to make you smile every time you use it. So here's the takeaway. The PS5 Pro costs $700 because it's not just another console refresh, it's a technological statement, a Franken GPU built from three generations, a memory system that finally gives games the full buffet, an AI upscaler tuned for buttery, smooth gameplay, and the cooling, storage, and quality control to make sure it all works. You're not just buying a box, you're buying ambition. Sony's attempt to prove consoles can still lead, not just follow. The only question left is, would you pay for that ambition? Would you spend $700 to get cutting-edge gaming tech in your living room? Or would you stick with the trusty original PS5 and wait for the next generation? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And while you're there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the tech shaping the games we play.